Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church in Ithaca. We are delighted to have you with us here today, both here in the room and at home on the internet. A couple of notes before we begin, as I slowly back up to get away from the pulpit mic. Um, first of all, according to our pandemic protocols, uh, singing is wonderful, but we're still not allowed to do it here in the building together. Um, so when we get to the hymns, please stand and please read along with the text, but only sing inwardly in your hearts. And know that people at home are joining with us um, singing loudly, and the choirs of saints and angels are singing loudly with us in heaven. But as of right now, we can only sing inwardly here in this space. We will have Eucharist. Um, once we get to that point, we'll talk about how that's going to work. By now, we're getting pretty good at it, so don't stress. Um, that'll work well. Everything that's about to happen is can be found in your bulletin, um, which hopefully was handed to you, or can be found at the front of the church, or in the back, um, or in the comments section. So again, welcome. Our first hymn is hymn number 615. So please stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his
Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion, for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint me, you shall anoint for me the one whom I named to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peaceably? He said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see... Jesse, are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ready and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The word of the Lord.
let us read together Psalm 20 as printed in your bulletin. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Grant you your heart's desire and prosper all your plans. We will shout for joy at your victory and triumph in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord gives victory to his anointed. We will answer him out of his holy heaven with the victorious strength of his right hand. Some put their trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will call upon the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall down, but we will arise and stand upright. O Lord, give victory to the King and answer us when we call. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. 
He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. There is a school of thought in churches at times that what we need to do to be the best version of our churchy selves is to pay very close attention to the ways of as Sam the Eagle would say on the Muppets, business. Um, now, I will admit in my um, over 10 years of ordained ministry that there are times when the world of business can yield very helpful results, like when the church finally learns to measure results of a thing that it is doing, to learn if some new idea is working or just sort of spinning its wheels or not. Um, but there are also times when relying on business can lead to some strange places. Um, I recall one diocesan meeting, it wasn't here, don't worry, um, and it was some years ago, when the bishop, again, not our bishop, don't worry, uh, informed us very excitedly that we had just gotten the survey back, and in the survey, the people online who had talked the most about the Episcopal Church were new mothers and women who went to Weight Watchers. He did not know what we should do about this, but he was sure that we should do something. We still don't know um, what arrived at this particular data point or what we really should do about this data point, or even if this is a reliable data point, but business got us this data point. Um, and I assure you the discussion among the clergy as to what kind of programs might meet, meet the needs of new moms and women and Weight Watchers and attract them to the church was quite a sight. The implication at the time was that because we had arrived at this new morsel of information by you know, scientific methods and surveys and the Nielsen study that it must be very important and so we had to pay attention to it because it was telling us something. We didn't know what and we didn't know what it was calling us to but it must be very important because of business. There's that prevailing idea again, I think. I think again imported from you know, Sam the Eagle's world of business that the best way to grow the church, the best way to bring about the kingdom of God, the best way to follow in the footsteps of Christ is by ultimately doing like business, by controlling and planning and well executing a vision, all the things. Because if there is one thing that brings you success in business, it's control and plans and visions and a good, well-executed spreadsheet. And I have to admit, I profoundly enjoy those things too. They calm and they soothe me. I very much like being in control and knowing what is going to happen next. But I have to tell you that the idea that through enough planning and enough control and enough visioning that we can bring about the kingdom is a really tempting one because that's the kind of stuff that humans like. And it works in other areas of our world. But then we get today's gospel. And now some context. The very start of the text um, makes it clear that Jesus is telling this part of the text to explain the thing that was at the end of the other part of the text. 
Um, and by that I mean the thing he just said that we don't get this week is that he's telling the disciples that he only plans to explain himself in parables because it's not like anyone is going to understand him anyway. So, you know, he might as well have fun. And so these two parables both act as parables on their, in their own right and as explanatory statements about why and how Jesus uses parables at all. Um, they're meta. Jesus is playing chess and not checkers. It's very deep. They work on many levels. So the first parable talks about this guy who throws some seed around, do, does exactly nothing, and then, miraculously, he realizes that he has a harvest, and he smartly heads out to collect this harvest that he has done absolutely nothing to prepare for. And the second parable talks about a mustard seed, which, while not actually the largest tree ever, is pretty hardy and kind of invasive, and you can't quite kill it. So it's a little like unto the zucchini of the ancient Near East. One day it's this teeny tiny thing that you might be nice, and it might be nice to eat a zucchini, and then the next day you're wondering who else you can sneak the zucchini to because it won't stop producing and all you have now is zucchini forever and forever. But the common thread for both the parables is the idea that the humans involved have absolutely no idea what's going on at any point. This initial guy is not a farmer. He is a guy. Sounds nicer in Greek, but in English, he is a guy. And as a side note, what Jesus has against actual farmers is unclear, but like the sower who sows some seed, this guy does not sow the seed methodically. We are told he just is tossing it randomly. There's a different Greek verb for sowing seed. Here, he's just throwing it. But it grows anyway. And we're also left to assume that he doesn't weed, he doesn't water, he doesn't fertilize, he doesn't chase away pests. He just shows up one day again, and he harvests. Similarly, it's not like there's anybody watching over the, musher, the mustard shrub, just grows and grows and grows and does its mustardy thing so powerfully that nothing can stop it, even benign neglect. Jesus' implication here seems to be that even if he uses confounding, obscure parables, and even if he obscures his message from the crowds, God's message is still going to get through somehow. People are still going to manage to understand and get the gist of it somehow, even if humans usually get things wrong, and we really do. God's message is still going to shine through. God's will is still going to be done somehow. And so for us, sitting here in the tail end of a pandemic after a year that we really could not plan or prepare for. The implication seems to be that all of this really effective business planning and control in the world doesn't ultimately matter as much as what God might be up to. It turns out we cannot provoke the reign of God by being smart or being prepared or by having a whole lot of spreadsheets or having a really detailed five-year plan. And we learned that this past year because at a certain point, all of that flies out the window anyway. But what we can do, what God invites us to do is be alert for the working of the Spirit. What God invites us to do is to be awake and watchful for those times when there appears to be a harvest all around us that God has given to us. Because God always brings a harvest to us, and the question is whether we are alert and watchful enough to rake it in when we see it. God will bring us things to do, people to serve, resources to bring to bear, God is always going to have ways and people to bring about the kingdom of God, whether or not we are realizing what's going on. The question is whether we want to realize what is going on. 
our most excellent Sam the Eagle-like practices aren't really going to help God much, but our being awake and alert and ready to move is. Our job is not so much to project manage the kingdom of heaven. Our job is to assist in the harvest. Our job is to assist in the birth as it comes into the world, to be ready to help when our turn comes, and to be watchful for signs that it is breaking in. Because whether or not we are ready for it, whether or not we are prepared for it, and whether or not we think it is on schedule, it is going to come and we should be ready. Amen. Now let us stand and affirm the faith of the Church and the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of a Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our prayers to God, whose loving kindness empowers us to grow from strength to strength responding to each petition by saying, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may maintain a balance between faith and inquiry, truth and imagination, justice and pastoral sensitivity, so that unity may prevail in spite of differences and differences may be tempered for the sake of unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our presidents and advisors, senators and members of Congress, governors, mayors, and members of local legislative bodies, that their decisions may support the well-being of all economic, social, and racial groups, let us pray to the Lord. That in our ministry we may plant small seeds, trusting that by God's grace our feeble efforts will produce beautiful and lofty trees laden with fruit. Let us pray to the Lord. For artists, actors, and athletes whose lifestyles are the models for our age, that they may turn from corrupting achievements and reveal those enduring virtues from which moral conviction, responsibility, and honesty take root. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are suffering from physical or emotional illness, that the Holy Spirit may answer them in the day of trouble and reveal the gift of hope in the night season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are traveling this summer, that they may journey in safety and return refreshed, let us pray to the Lord. 
for all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to God alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. May the love of Christ enter our hearts as we continue to offer our prayers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, and especially for Theodore, Dara, Lorraine, Lorraine, Lucy, Carol, Catherine, Wes, Susan, Joan, Jean, James, Laura, Martha, Mary, James, Jay, Terry, Alan, Sarah, Susie, Skip, Patty, Elaine, Pat, Jerry, Cecil, Edith, Shirley, Donald, and any others you will name out loud or in your heart. And we pray for those celebrating the anniversary of their birth this week, Gary Anderson, Mitchell Hall, Nancy Simon, Beverly Green, Owen Hakinga, Hakinga Cecilia Gulert, and Brett Oaks. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning again. It is wonderful to see um, everyone here at St. John's in person, in the flesh, like your whole face um, in three dimensions. It is a wonderful thing to have you back in the building. We have a couple of announcements uh, today. Um, uh, we are uh, extending a special thanks to everyone who uh, participated in the Cyber Choir over the past year. Um, it has been a and hearty experiment. Thank you for keeping our uh, singing going over this past pandemic year as we uh, press on into the summer. Cyber Choir is taking a seasonable break, um, but we will figure out what is next in the fall. So again, thank you for participating. I know um, some of you hadn't sung in choir before, some of you had not recorded yourself before, and absolutely none of you had recorded yourself to be mixed together to uh, form a virtual choir during a pandemic before. So thank you for your faithfulness and your bravery. Um, for Eucharist, uh, again, because it's the pandemic, we're gonna be doing things a little bit differently. We're going to be um, forming a line down the center aisle to receive the bread. I will be standing right here and distributing the bread to you. Um, the center aisle uh, line makes it easier for you to space out if that is your wish. If you're on the side, you can go out that way and then back and around and then uh, do like a serpentine coring the apple motion. Um, 
We also will have wine available in teeny tiny chalices, one on either side of me. Um, if it is your wish to receive the wine, hold on to the, your wafer and go to the side um, where you sit, and then you can dip or uh, intinct the wafer and receive it that way. Um, so I think that's clear. We've done it a couple times now, and we're getting really good at it. Um, so don't worry, we can do this. Finally, um, you may have been wondering why we have blue vestments um, arrayed across the front of our altar. That is because um, our new Advent blue parapets and vestments are a lovely donation from Mary Ellen and her family in memory of her sister, Audrey Volt. Um, and so we are going to be dedicating them today. Um, so let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for these, the gifts of your people, and for the work of these many hands, which have beautified this place and have furnished it for the celebration of your holy mysteries. Accept and bless these gifts and all that we have done, and grant that in these earthly things we may behold the, uh, the order and beauty of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now you can look forward to seeing lovely blue during Advent. So thank you, Mary, and thank you, your family. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is very. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin, we become subject to evil and death. You, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy and food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
page 365, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Peace to love and serve the Lord.